everybody, it's Zach again at NewTutorial.com. Hey, coming in here today, it looks like Russia has test-fired a nuclear intercontinental ballistic missile. Uh, probably what didn't have a payload on it, but it definitely was a test. And according to what they're saying, it was a successful test. And so I'm looking at this, I'm reading the news, it was cited over Israel. Uh, some people are saying already that this was a, a warning to Israel, a warning uh, to countries in the Middle East. Uh, it's been and rumored now that Russia wants to work with Iran to unseat Assad in Syria. And uh, uh, there's all kinds of conspiracy theories that have been out there for years saying that Assad is a possible um, uh, antichrist uh, figure. There's all kinds of different theories about that. And who knows what's going to happen. All I know is things are heating up there are things that are just going crazy right now in the world today and so I hear about this on the news, and I didn't get a chance to read the story. I was talking to my friend, Pastor Joe Fox, on, on the phone, and uh, he's telling me this stuff. Hey, did you see the news? And I'm like, no, nah, I haven't seen it yet, but I heard about the, the launch, but I just haven't read the story yet. Uh, Mike, I'm, I'm thinking about this, and I'm going, oh, my goodness. I, I think back to the movie War Games, and I'm just like, what are the people in NORAD? You know, what's going on over there? I mean, what happens when one of these things, you know, one of these blips light up the map? They're, they have launched a nuclear missile, or, or an intercontinental ballistic missile, a test launch. I have seven. Correction, eight. That's eight redbirds, two degrees past apogee. Better get the old man down here. Over day, we have Soviet missile warning. Check for malfunction and report confident. Projected target area is low red regions, two five. Two six. All stations, this is Crystal Palace. Initiate emergency conference. Stand by. 19 degrees past apogee. Possible 18 targets in track. Estimate re entry at 1923 Zulu. And so, and so you're like, what, you know, it's, things are crazy right now. Things are crazy. Now, a few weeks ago, on my, or a few days ago on my blog, I put a post on there from 119 Ministries just a couple days ago, and it was from their new Sound the Trumpet or Blow the Trumpet video from their End of Days series. Uh, and um, they, they was, it was the next uh, series, next video in the series, uh, the last one being the Daniel Unsealed video. And if you've watched my blog and if you've watched some of my videos before, I have told you in the past, you need to watch Daniel Unsealed. You need to watch this video. You need to be aware of what is happening right now. I'm telling you. I'm going to put the link again down in the bottom of this description. When is it time to pop smoke? When is it time to say, you know what, it's time to go? When is the time to do that? You need to be ready. You need to be aware of what's going on. You need to be aware of biblical scriptures that are lining up with today's events. Guys, I really truly believe in my heart that there's going to be a, 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 a second greater exodus. The Bible talks very clearly about an exodus. Uh, that happened with the with the Hebrew Israelites um, back in the time of Moses in Egypt, and, but it also says that there will be a second Exodus. It's very clear that there will be a second Exodus. There will be a time when people, when they when they talk about the Exodus, that they say you know they're not even going to think about the Exodus that happened when God brought His people out of Egypt. No, they're going to talk about the Exodus when God brought His people out of the land of the north and all the lands that He had scattered them. That's straight out of Jeremiah. So here's the deal. Someone once someone asked me, it's like, you know, so what what are what is this um how did God do this? How did God how is God gonna bring about the second greater exodus? And you know what? I don't know. I don't know. I don't have the answers to everything. But here's what I can tell you. In the first exodus, God brought th around people estimate around three million people out of the land of Egypt. And we think of that and we're like, you know, that's that's a logistical nightmare to move three million people overnight. Just in the middle of the night, up and at them. Here we go. Three million people out of Egypt. How do you do that? I don't know. That can only be the power of the Most High. And so we have to put our faith and trust in Him, but He's going to do it. Let's look at this verse from Exodus. Check this verse out from Exodus. And then we're going to look at a verse from Revelation. And so in Exodus 19.4, Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, and how I bare you on eagles' wings, and brought you unto myself. Exodus 19.4. 
You have seen what I did unto the Egyptians and how I bear you on eagles' wings. Very interesting, the eagles' wings. But check this out, verse. Check this verse out in Revelation. Look at this. Isn't this amazing? And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place, where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. And look at that. To the woman, were, this is the bride. This is the bride escaping from, from the serpent, from the dragon, from the evil one, from, from the Antichrist. Here, here it is right here, uh, escaping uh, in Revelation twelve fourteen, where it's talking about this woman, the bride, okay, the Israelites, the Hebrews, that he is bringing out from the lands of the north and all the places where he has scattered his people. He's bringing them back to the land. And he's going to give them again two wings of a great eagle, just like it was in the, in the first exodus. This will be the way it goes in the second exodus. How is he going to do it? I don't know. But I'm telling you right now, there are camps of the righteous all throughout this country and the world. I know some of these people who are setting these up. Uh, there are camps of the righteous. And these camps of the righteous are places where, people, where, where the Father has prepared a place for the bride to go. And uh, we're doing that right now. There are people right now, and I'm actively working on getting that too as well with Pastor Joe Fox. And I know there's other people out there who are doing the same thing, uh, other righteous people who are setting up camps of the righteous. I know there's a, a number of them in Tennessee. There's a number of them in the Ozarks already. There's a number of them in Oregon. Uh, there's uh, some really good friends of mine who are now moving to Costa Rica. And, and there are other uh, Hebrew uh, settlements in Costa Rica actually already. And, and there are other places throughout the world where Hebrew settlement he Hebrew communities are set up, and these are the places, the camps of the righteous, where, where the bride will go to that's prepared for her in the wilderness, and there will be safety. There will be safety there. And so what I'm asking you to do, go to the bottom of my description of this, of this video blog and look at that uh, Daniel Unsealed video, and then watch the trumpet one. I'll, I'll also put that link there as well. Uh, but they're on my blog. Uh, you can search for Daniel Unsealed in my blog and find it there, but check it out in my description. And if you don't want to go to the blog, you've got to see this, what's going on. You, you're gonna, Listen, if you're a Christian, and you're in the church right now, and you're looking around this world, and you're like, dude, man, this is crazy. You know, any minute now, the, the rapture's going to happen. Guess what? There ain't no rapture. It ain't going to happen. There is, there is no magic rapture bus to come get you. You are going to go through the tribulation, just like the Egyptians Egyptians went through all that hysteria back in Egypt, and they did. They that that was there. God had the Father had that plan of them seeing all of this, all of this destruction, and all of this madness, so that they could praise the one true God, and they would know who was who was God, who was the true God. And guess what? He's going to make you see that too. He's going to make you go through that because at the end of this, he wants everyone to know who he is and how he is the, the one true God of this universe. Make no mistake about it. That's how every knee is going to bow because they're going to see his wrath. They're going to see his judgment and they're going to see his destruction. You need to go out there and you need to find this video, see this video at my description. Check it out. I don't want to be a doom and gloom guy. I really don't. But I got out of churchianity uh, about two years ago when I realized that this whole thing was just a farce and uh, I mean, it's a whole big mess and uh, there is no magic rapture bus coming to get you. Uh, it, it just ain't going to happen. That is a farce. So check that video out. Um, one thing today, uh, one more report I was going to let you know. I, I went out and I uh, uh, went to the, the coin shop today and um, picked up a couple of uh, these quarters. Really nice quarters. Let me see if I can get that close to the 1964 quarter, all silver, nice. And uh, one of the things I noticed when I was in there was that uh, uh, I was trading in some of my cash from my kid's piggy bank. You know, remember the Noah's Ark piggy bank? You know, I had a bunch of quarters, like 50 bucks worth of quarters, and I'm like, I'm going to trade this in for a few real quarters, you know, some real silver. And so I did that uh, today and uh, just getting rid of some of uh, the garbage money. But anyway, um, uh, Man, one thing I notice when I'm in there, and every time I'm in there, is that there are so many people in there trading in their silver and trading in their, their coin collections, and you see this look of hope on their face when they're, they're waiting for the appraisal across the counter from the person who's looking at their valuables because you can tell these people are hurting. They're, they're there trading in their valuables and their heirlooms because they, they can't make their car payments. They can, they've lived a lifestyle, this American despicable lifestyle of anything and everything and no matter what the cost and now they're paying the, they're paying the price because they, they have lived a lifestyle that they shouldn't have been living. You know, they can't afford their car payments or their house payments or they've gotten divorced. Uh, they've, they, can't, they can't afford to put food on their tables anymore. They've lived a lifestyle of lawlessness. And 
I'm surrounded by people in the store in the store that's trading and turning in their valuables because they have no other way to pay their bills. And it's just sad because we live in a lifestyle in a society full of lawlessness. Anyway, it's just something I wanted to report back today. Again, it was like no other time I've ever been in there. Lots of people in there um, just t- turning in their coin collections. Over to the right, there's a couple of guys over there looking at uh, coin collections and appraising uh, them. And then over to my left, there's uh, a woman over there you know, trading in her jewelry and whatever, some coins, that she, some silver coins that she had, uh, trying to get some money uh, because uh, she's hopeless. Uh, these people, we live in a hopeless world because they don't, know, they don't know their Messiah. They don't understand that the Messiah came to teach the commandments of the Father and, and turn his people away from lawlessness. And we have a, a Christian culture today that lives in lawlessness because they have, they have no idea you know, what it means to walk separate, set apart from the world. They're living just as the world is living you can't tell a Christian apart from an atheist because they live the same way. They go to the same sports games, they eat the same garbage food, and they worship to bow down to the same idols uh, in their lives. It's just you can't tell the difference. And so we are to be a set-apart people. I'm urging you, be a set-apart people. Check out these videos below. We need to learn and see what's coming because uh, it's coming quick, fast, and in a hurry. Get prepared. Go home. Read your Bible. Thanks.